Yo. We live, homie. Holmes, Vatoki, Nata. I say we live, bro. Right here, man. MMA reloaded. Nobody does it better. Nobody will do it better. Nobody will ever do it better than me. Right here, face to face, man. Bringing the real talk. Part two. And this time, we talk championship edition. That's right, boy. Get your gold out. Get your gold sunglasses out. Whatever you got. Yeah, because we're taking a strap, raise that shit up, and we're bringing it straight to your ass. So, if you talk championships in the UFC, right now, there's not really much to talk about. Ah, you see me? You thought I was going to say fucking sort of about titles and all that shit. But, no, it's not. It's all about I, I don't know really how to say this So Because bro You can put the blame on Dana White Easily Put the blame on Dana White Easy Some of these championship matchups are so Simple to think of Yeah But The UFC never gets off their fucking horses To fucking go and book them now, you think, whose fault is that? It's Sean Shelby, Dana White, easily. Fam, I mean, take this Conor McGregor situation, for example. I mean, <coughs> in my opinion, Conor McGregor should have been stripped of the 155 crown. In that press conference, as soon as Ariel Hill won, he asked a question to Dana that night. Yeah, Dana should have responded, fucking Conor will be stripped. Indefinitely. Because, bruv, what's he doing? What's he doing, bruv? He's just probably keeping a fucking belt in his toilet while he, while he goes for a shit, in it. Yeah, I mean, what the fuck else is he doing when he's not defending it? <sighs> Stupid bitch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, why make a fight between Khabib Nurmagomedov and Tony Ferguson and you say that's for the unified belt? When in actual fact, you ain't stripped Conor of that, of that fucking first title in the first place. I mean, come on, man. Bro, Dana's been doing UFC now for over two decades, right? I've never seen such a fucking clueless period of ever that, that I'm seeing right now. In terms of matchmaking. I told you this in the last Real Talk. Israel Adesanya. Yeah? Bro, oh, man, what can I say about that guy? That... Is the example of great creativity in MMA. You want big money signings? That is one fucking bastard right there. That's a tough fucking Anderson. If Anderson Silva was to pass the torch, he passed it to John. He passed it to John Jones. John Jones passing the torch, it's gone straight to Israel Adesanya, man. I told everyone about that in the first place. You heard straight. Look at my fucking Instagram when I first posted about Israel. Look at, my, look at MMA Reload Facebook, folks. I posted, I posted that shit first. And what, what, and what now? What now? Now everyone knows about Israel because he put that fucking beating on that fucking poor bastard. Yeah? At UFC 221. Broke his fucking nose. <laughs> but back to, back to gold. You know, that corner situation is fucked. That's one. Number two... The welterweight division now. Everyone talks about Tyron Woodley beef with Dana White. Yeah? <laughs> That's why no welterweight title fight's been actually made. I mean, we've heard so many rumours. Yeah, I'm tired of posting rumours, man. I'm tired of posting shit saying to my fans, oh, it's in the works, it's in the works. Bullshit! Because if it's not in the works, yeah? If it's in the works, but then gets called off later, yeah? Brother, that looks bad on me. It looks bad on the page that posted it. You get me? Because there's no real fucking point of posting anything if it's not real. If it's not true, man. That goes out to all MMA pages. If it's not true, don't fucking post it. MMA World. Bro, that's the reason I respect that guy so much at MMA World. Is because, you know, fucking... He posts... Me and him. Uh, I, I, I think he's one of my top competitions in terms of terms of posting I think like fucking 
it, but I think it's the same days, same time, near enough the same time that we post shit. But you know, he's he's one of them guys that actually fucking waits yeah until the fight becomes true. This welterweight title picture is some bull shit. If I was Dana White and you're criticizing Tyron Woodley for the way he fights, and you're criticizing Tyron for the way he speaks, he may be he may speak like shit, but who doesn't? Conor McGregor speaks like shit, and you made him into a superstar. Nate Diaz speaks like shit, and he's a fucking you know, lightweight number one contender. He should be featherweight champion there because he beat the shit out of Conor McGregor in the first fight. But I digress because yeah. All you gotta do is just put Tyron Woodley up one on one with RDA, yeah, Rafael dos Anjos. Cause the fight is there. He's he's there for the making. He's there for the taking. And it's there for those two fuckers to go and fucking mix it up in the cage like we are thinking they're gonna do. I mean, bro, there was the rumor about putting Colby Covington and Tyron are tough as coaches. You remember that? That's some bullshit too. Colby should fight Kamaru Usman. Done. One fight. Darren Till versus Gunnar Nelson. Main event at UFC London. Another fight done. Yeah. Mike Perry versus Max Griffin. Mike Perry wins. I would put Mike Perry one on one with. Uh, with. Fucking some other fucker. Um, what fuck's his name? Uh, fuck. I'm going to draw in a blanket. But you know what I mean. Yeah, with uh, with Yancy Maderos. Yeah, three fights, four fights. Bro, I've just made four huge fights in like two seconds. Yeah, cause my passion. The UFC needs to man the fuck up, grow some fucking nuts, and fucking say and give the fans what they fucking want to see. You give us Claudio Gadelli against Carlos Esparza. I'm not complaining about that because it's a good fight still. But you give us Cyborg versus Jana Kustinaka. No. No, you fucker. You're going to have another fucking lawsuit on your hands. This ain't the fucking mass transit incident in ECW in like 1994. It's some bullshit, man. You know? Then you talk heavyweight. What the fuck is going on at heavyweight? If, if Daniel beats Stipe, what's he going to vacate? The heavyweight title or the light heavyweight title? If he vacates the heavyweight champion, he's still light heavyweight champion. What the fuck's the point of even making the fight in the first place? There is no fucking point. TJ versus DJ. Make that fucking fight. DJ has no competition, bro. Not unless you sign another fucking flyweight. And, or you put Tim Elliott one-on-one -on -one with DJ part two. Because Tim, in my opinion, gave DJ the toughest fight at the moment. Or baby-faced assassin Brandon Moreno. He's got so many young guys, man, just wanting to grab DJ by the nuts and lift him and spin him the fuck around and take that belt. I think Brandon Moreno one of the guys that can do it, man. You're trying to tell me that, uh, that, if, that if Daniel beats Stipe... He's going to keep the heavyweight championship, but I don't see the point in making a fight. Four super fights already made. Number five, fuck Daniel versus Stipe. Your UFC 226 headliner should be Daniel Cormier versus Alexander Gustafsson. Yeah? Your co-headliner, Stipe Miocic versus Fabrizio Verdun. Number two, done. You see that? That's how fucking simple it is. So why the fuck didn't they do it like that? Because they're fucking stupid bastards. Yeah? Then you want a triple gold? You want three gold headliners I can give you for UFC 226. Fabricio and Stipe. DC and Alexander Gustafsson. Number three, TJ versus Dominic Cruz. No, not TJ versus Cruz. TJ versus Cody Guabram. Number two. Boom. But TJ, fucking bitch and moan on Facebook and Instagram. Saying that he don't want that. He don't want uh, Cody because he wants fucking DJ, which I'm not going to argue about. But Dominic Cruz steps in and says, bruv, you got so much competition on 135, look who's right in front of you. Because DJ 
because TJ Tillishaw has been bitching, moaning about that Dominic Cruz fight for years since that fight happened. Yeah, so that's a fucking sick fight if you want to make that. All I'm trying to say is, right, guys, that the UFC needs to pull their head out of their ass, yeah, and they need to look at their assets. You need to look at your champions. Your champions are what are the faces of your company, fam. So you gotta look at your champions, look at your top contenders, and you gotta give the fans what they want, mate. It's not hard. You got the money to do it. You got the resources to do it. You got the fighters to do it. The athletes to do it. Do it. Do it. Cause if you don't do it, bro, I'll just end up watching Bellator Heavyweight Grand Prix. You get me? <laughs> I'm joking. I never fucking watch that. But what I'm trying to say is, your champions. I've always fucking said it. I said it when Conor was featherweight champ. You want to see him as a real rock star? Yeah, put him. Yeah, now that he's fucking champion, you're at the top of the ladder. Don't mean shit. Cream can always melt and go right down to the bottom, boy. Use your champions. Love life and love MMA, folks.